Today we've got the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro and we're gonna do a bit of a teardown comparison to check out the new design that Apple is using, especially in the 15 Pro and see how it compares. We've got USB-C, new cameras, and a new titanium frame. So I definitely wanna get under the hood of these devices and see what we're working with. And I'm here at this Watso workspace in Sydney, Australia with an absolutely incredible view behind me. But the only view that we're interested in today is what's inside these phones. So let's get into it right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Pulseway. Pulseway manages all your repetitive IT tasks easily from system management and automation to device rollout and troubleshooting. Pulseway gives you the freedom to keep tabs on your entire network from anywhere in the world. It's easy to use and powerful for whatever scale your IT deployment may be. To get started with Pulseway and learn more about how you can transform your IT tasks, check out the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. Now for today's teardown, we actually have some official Apple tools, so we're not gonna do this the janky way with a, with a hair dryer. You may recognize this machine from my video about Apple's self-service repair program. These are the machines that they will ship out to you with the heated display pocket, and we even have the correct sized trays for the new 15 and 15 Pro. So we are doing this by the book to get a look inside the new phones. All right, so first things first, we've got just two screws on the outside. I do wonder how long it's gonna be before Apple completely removes all screws and just, you, I guess you just use hope. So next up, we're gonna use the heated display removal pocket. This thing is ridiculously over-engineered. It has these heat contacts all the way around to warm up the phone and my goodness, the, the amount of effort that they put into designing the products seemingly is mirrored by what they require to take apart the products. Lock it into place. All right, that's, that's not going anywhere. So we partially put it in, we rotate this. All right, and now we push it in. It's very particular. Now the fun fact that I learned recently about this machine is apparently on the ones that you get as a consumer, there's a USB port over here somewhere, uh, and the USB port just doesn't, just doesn't connect to anything. So that's fun, that's, good. that's a good Apple classic. Oh, so that was the warm up, and now we wait for two minutes. The wait for the wait, good. Oh God, here it comes. Oh gosh, the, the sound. What do I do now? I push this down, I twist you it. twist it down. We twist this down. Okay, we've stopped the horrendous screeching. And now you pull the suction cup forward. Right, so we want to push the suction cup as far forward as we can. We'll lower it down. Flip that forward. Oh, I can feel the pressure. We're definitely lifting. Look at that. I suppose there is some benefit to uh, creating your ridiculous over-engineered tool like this. Oh, that was harder to take out than it was to put in. But here we go. Our newly display, mostly kind of separated iPhone 15. And now we've got this tray, which is also, of course, perfectly designed. And these are, fun fact, identifiable by emojis. So the tray for the iPhone 15 has the uh, the looking eye emoji on it, and the 15 Pro has some some paw prints. So that I don't know why. How would you know? Oh yeah, the the eye emoji is the iPhone 15. Obviously, everyone knows that. Now I do like this part, where we get to lift it up, and suction the screen. So it stays open, look at that. That's so lovely. So we've got this color matched interior. The shroud is all seemingly part of the frame. So we've got a new screwdriver and we've got a couple of, uh, Apple loves to put these little cowlings over their connectors. Look at that. This, if you wanna order this part, it's probably $7. And there's your display. It doesn't feel like a screen at all. It feels like a piece of plastic. So I guess now we gotta repeat the process. We're going back in the heat pocket to lift the back off the phone. Oh God, here we go again. Ah, uh, shush, shush. Go, go, go. Uh, duh. Thank God. That is so loud and it, old, it, it will just constantly go. 
until you do this. We don't want to crack the back glass because I think if you order this part on the self-service repair store, it's, uh, it's at least $100 for a piece of glass. Ooh, it's hotter than before. Wow, that, ooh, that is really hot. Holy cow. All right, so then that's the connection for our MagSafe and our cheek coils on the back. And that's the back glass for the iPhone 15. Now this was a big deal when they, they made this more removable. Now the big news this year is that the same process should be true for the 15 Pro. Previously, the back glass was all fused with the chassis and it was all one unit that was astronomically expensive to repair. And as we all know, a lot of people cracked the back glass. So hopefully we should be able to do all of this exactly as is again with the 15 Pro. Uh, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. That would literally destroy me if I had to do this multiple times a day. Oh my God, it actually, the phone popped up from the thing because it's a little bit smaller. So we're gonna turn the machine off now. All right, now hopefully this time it's not going to emerge from the heated display removal pocket. There we go. We have liftoff. All right, so let's take a look inside. Now, interestingly enough, we don't have the exact same layout as the regular iPhone 15. So in the 15, we had this big aluminum shield, which is right under the glass. Here, we do still have the guts of the machine. You can see over here is the back of the camera housing, our face ID module. We've got our big signature iPhone Pro L-shaped battery our logic board and all of our nonsense down here at the bottom. Yeah, so this is definitely new since the 14 Pro, rather than the smaller shields that were covering the connectors, we have this one gigantic thing that seems to cover the entire logic board. This might also double as a, a heat sink of sorts. Mostly this side seems to be connectors. There's, oh my gosh, there's a lot. Well, we have a SIM tray here because I'm in Australia and this is an international version. If this was a US one, this would just be a little hunk of plastic because of reasons. So the most surprising thing about this is that the construction isn't really that similar to the regular iPhone 15. We kind of assumed when they made the back glass more repairable, that meant that they were moving to a similar internal layout, but it, it looks more like a hybrid between an iPhone 15 and a 14 Pro. So it looks like the camera module is mounted with four Phillips head screws from the screen side, whereas on the regular 15, we have four Phillips, or actually no, just three, but this is from the back of the phone. But anyway, time to go back in the heated display removal pocket. <laughs> oh, we've got our first error. I'm impressed we made it this far. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, settle down. Look, I'm getting better at this now. It's been, it's been four times now. Now this is already a pretty big accomplishment because this is not something that Apple really wanted you to do before now. So this is already a move in the right direction. Ooh, toasty, toasty, toasty. This was actually surprisingly not difficult to do. I'm impressed and oh, hello. We have a similar style uh, shield around the internals of the phone, but with a cutout, which seemingly is to make room for the MagSafe and the Qi coils. That is a really interesting look. So there you have it, folks. This is nearly as close as you can get to a historic moment for a pro-level iPhone with removable back glass. And you'll notice that unlike the regular iPhone 15, the inside here is not color matched, and that's because Apple has this new method for essentially fusing the aluminum centerpiece to the titanium frame. This middle is not titanium, it's aluminum, and the frame is bonded around it. Really cool to see. So with the phones now both opened up, it's quite interesting to see what Apple has and has not changed. While the 15 Pro is the first Pro iPhone that has an actually removable back glass, they didn't change the structure of the internals. Unlike the iPhone 15, which has this shield on the front, on the 15 Pro, it's still on the back. 
Now, curiously, the, the biggest observation that we made while in here is the actual USB-C port. Now, obviously it's mounted in an opposite way. So you can see it's kind of mounted from the back of the phone versus being mounted from the front of the phone. Because again, for whatever reason, these phones are essentially built backwards. But one thing that is the same between them is the USB-C port is attached to this ribbon cable that sits on the mid wall of the phone. And that's a bit of a bummer because it's gonna make it much more expensive and much more difficult to repair. Because, I mean, you can see already just to get visibility of these, you have to remove the speaker modules, which go over here. You have to remove the Taptic engine on the iPhone 15 Pro. There's quite a bit of stuff that has to come out just to get this perspective. There's also six screws on the actual USB-C port itself and obviously in this state it wouldn't be ready to come out so there's quite a bit of work to get this thing out definitely not easy to repair that USB-C port which is less reliable than lightning don't get me wrong I am in favor of USB-C but I just can tell that this is going to be a pain to deal with when those ports break. Another interesting tidbit about the phone that you may have seen online is there's no more branding for the chip. We saw that the A17 Pro goes bare, but now the A16, which is in the regular iPhone 15, also doesn't have any labels. But Apple being Apple, they couldn't resist putting some logos around. So on the other side of the 15 Pro, there's a tiny, tiny little Apple logo. And on the front of the regular 15, there's a tiny, tiny little Apple logo. You can also clearly see the differences in the size of the camera module. I mean, my goodness, that 48 megapixel sensor is absolutely massive. You can see just how much real estate it takes up inside the phone. And you can also see that now that we have a dynamic island on both models, the modules are basically identical. I cannot see any differences. So the dynamic island is copy and paste from the 15 Pro to the regular 15. So a really interesting comparison teardown here. I am very perplexed by Apple's decisions in almost all aspects of life. And these phones are no different. Why Apple chose to effectively build them in opposite directions and why they chose to solder a USB-C port onto a ribbon cable and why they decided that they no longer needed to label the chips inside these phones, we'll never know. It's incomprehensible. But I will say this, in terms of repairability, not a whole lot has changed. I think it is beneficial that the, uh, the 15 Pro has that removable back glass. That is definitely going to make a big difference in bringing down the cost of repairs for a very crucial component. But it is important to remember that Apple requires you to run a piece of software to serialize the back glass. They put a chip on it for some ungodly stupid reason. So it's not exactly easy. It's not necessarily something that you're gonna be able to do at home, but it is at least doable. So that's good, but really apart from that, they haven't made any improvements. The USB-C port really should have been modular. And I mean, just getting into this phone with this giant machine, it's, it's not easy. So I don't really have a repairability score for the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro. So I'm just gonna say bad, just, just pr generally bad. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.